Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com where today we're going to take a look at this really cool masked hand lettering effect. Uh, and if you do enjoy this tutorial, well, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss any Photoshop tutorials past, present, or future. Now, we are taking on a few sponsors to allow us to continue creating amazing content and really sort of build things out here over at tutvid.com. Hire an editor, you know, some stuff that so we can continue making good content but make it even more consistently. And because of that, today this video is brought to us by your good friends and mine over at squarespace.com. Not only does Squarespace give you the tools and make it so easy to create amazing, beautiful, wonderful, spectacular website, but they've chosen to support this very channel and help us do exactly what we're trying to do in terms of building this operation out and making it bigger, better, and badder in all the right ways. As they say, whether you need a domain, website, or online store, why don't you go ahead and make it with Squarespace? Now, with all that in mind, Let's go ahead and jump into this video right now. So before we even get to Photoshop, what I have here is a blank sheet of paper, uh, as you can see, and I'm using these just, they're very cheap Crayola foam tip markers. This is actually a technique that I saw another YouTuber, Will Patterson, check him out. He's got some pretty cool videos on hand lettering and stuff like that. I uh, used these foam tip markers and just spent some time going back and forth, messing around a little bit. I'm trying to get the combination of words, the and natural, and basically, the way I'm working with this is going thin on the upstroke, thick on the downstroke. And with these cheap foam tip markers, you know, I'm not concerned about just pushing. So I'll go very light on the up and then just push and sort of flatten out part of the foam tip on the downstroke. So I'll just kind of get that movement going and just go through and write whatever word I'm working on. And as you can see here, we've got the natural. And then I scan this into the computer. There's going to be a link down in the uh, bio for this video. You can download this exact image, follow right along with the tutorial and uh, hopefully get a really cool result yourself. All right, and here you can see we have the scanned in set of words. I, I wrote the words all kind of disjointed this way so we can just easily grab one of them and take it over to our document and we can build, we can make the as big or small as we want and natural as big or small as we want. So what I wanna do here is number one, convert this to black and white. I know it looks black and white. I think I actually did scan it in black and white, but in case you do something like use your iPhone or your sm any smartphone for that matter, take a picture of your artwork and you know transfer it to your computer that way, you may need to just go ahead and just make sure that uh, the image is set to black and white. If I go image mode, this is in grayscale already, so we don't need to do that. But I'm going to set it to RGB color just so you can see what we got going on. So I would just throw a black and white adjustment layer over this. It's going to neutralize any color, any kind of weird color fringing, anything like that. And then what I would do is throw a levels adjustment layer on top of this. And here's where I would try to bring up, maybe you want to bring the weight of the text up a little bit, but maybe not too much. And then you could also bring the white up a little bit depending on how isolated you got your text. I actually managed to get a relatively great scan here where the, the paper around the lettering is very, very white. Uh, but depending on the, how, how great a scan or photo you get, that's all going to depend. What I'm looking for, and this is very important to, to take note of, we want to preserve the texture of the letters. So you see how we can still see like individual marks strokes and stuff that's all good if I bring this up too much to the point where we just get solid black we take away part of that kind of handwritten charm so we want to make sure that we don't do that I do want there to be that variation even amongst the letters all right so I'll commit that and then I'm going to shift click so I'm, I'm on the levels layer I'm going to shift click down to the background to select all the layers and then hit command or control E to merge all that stuff together and then on the background layer I'm gonna hit command or control I to invert therefore giving myself these white letters so then what we'll do is probably one last pass with levels. So throw another levels adjustment layer here. And maybe we want to make the text a little bit more white. But again, we just want to make sure we don't get rid of that nice texture we have. So just a little tweaking and adjusting if need be. Uh, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't know how much more tweaking and adjusting I really want to do. I think I think that's good. I shut levels off. Yeah, it made a little bit of a difference. We'll shift click and just merge those layers together. Again, command or control E. So now I have this other photo, see it up here, this professional boxing match photo. I'm going to drag this lettering and hold it over that tab, and then I'm going to let go to drop it in place. So I have all this lettering now here on this image. And this is where I'm going to decide which, uh, which of this lettering I want to keep. I kind of like this natural in the middle uh, because it's got a good N. I like the long tail on the end. The end down here I don't like quite as much, but I like the rest of the word natural here a lot. I think we got good, smooth, consistent letters. And then this version of uh, natural over here, let me just rotate it real quick, just take another look at this. Whoop, over rotate it a little bit. And what does that look like? That looks eh, okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that. We'll probably just pass on that altogether. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my uh, polygonal lasso tool here, and I'm going to cut out just the N here. So I'm going to come through here, I'm going to chop this out just like this. 
oops, hold down shift and continue making the poly lasso selection if you accidentally mess it up like I did. There we go. And then we're going to use the hotkey command or control J to pop that N up onto its own layer. So we can see now we have the N up on its own layer. Great. We're going to build the rest of the word here. Go back to our original a bit of text here. And I'm going to grab the rest of the letters from the natural down below. So again, using the poly lasso tool, I'm going to come through here. Boom, boom, just like that. Wrap right around here. Just like so. And I know I'm making a rough selection. Don't worry. I'll show you how to make it all work. On this layer, hit Command or Control J to pop it up onto its own new layer. Let's shut off the bottom layer. And now we want to sort of take these layers. So I got the, the actual part of natural down here. I'll use my Move tool. I'll move it up, kind of move it into place. We can always adjust it a little bit later. We're not going to really merge this. In fact, if I nudge it right in like that, that actually, that might be perfect. Uh, I'm not going to merge them together yet because I'm still not 100% certain. But if I Shift-click to select both layers, I can kind of move them in unison. And uh, I kind of dig that. I like the way that looks. I'm going to turn my original text back on. I'm going to hide those two top layers that we cut out. And what I need to do is uh, move this text down and choose a word, the. I think I like this, the, over here on the far right. So once more, grab my poly lasso tool. Ring a little selection around this bad boy here. And there we go. Get it just like that. And again, Command or Control J to pop the, the up onto the new layer. So now we have the. And the is probably going to kind of live, I don't know, We'll, we'll, we'll figure out where that's going to live exactly. In fact, part of the trick here is to set these layers to the blend mode of screen. So screen is going to drop away the black and just leave the white. If this was black text on the white background, we would use the blend mode multiply. So because the blend mode multiply will get rid of white and just save the black. So we're going to go screen, and that's going to get rid of black, as you see. And now we just have this nice white textured text. Let's take a quick break from this tutorial, guys. Once again, this tutorial is brought to us by Squarespace, our most generous of sponsors. Uh, Squarespace is the go-to platform if you're looking to create a website. I even made my personal photography website there. Check this out. See, I can just scroll down the front page of my website. Maybe I want to click on that image and check it out. My portfolio pops up. It was so easy to build this. Uh, maybe I want to go to the next image or, oh, wait, go back to that image that I just saw. No, you know what? Maybe it was the image right there, that image. Look at that. You can build a portfolio or any kind of site. Create an entire online store to sell your artwork or your photography or just show it all off with a great portfolio using squarespace.com. And one of the other cool features about Squarespace is that not only, of course, is it easy to build the website there, but every website is automatically responsive, meaning that whether you're viewing it on your desktop computer or on your mobile phone, it's going to automatically change and shape shift your website to make sure that it is a perfect browsing experience no matter where you're looking at it. And of course, that's really important these days because, well, you might be watching this tutorial right now on your phone. A lot of us browse the web on our phone and you want to make it easy for anyone who wants to check out your artwork, your photography, whatever it may be, to make sure they can check out your work and see it in the absolute most best possible way. And you can do that by creating that responsive website, which all the Squarespace websites are, using, of course, squarespace.com. So go over to squarespace.com slash tutvid, create your free trial. They don't even require a credit card up front. That's how confident they are that you're going to love this thing. And trust me, I loved it when I first uh, used it. It was before they ever started sponsoring my stuff. And I still have my photography website over there on squarespace.com. So squarespace.com slash tutvid, check it out. And if you decide to go with Squarespace, use the coupon code tutvid for 10% off. Once again, thank you, Squarespace. We do love you very much. Let's get back into this video. So we'll turn on the two natural text layers here, and we're going to set them both to screen. I want to make sure that they're really in place where I want them to be before I merge them together. I'm going to select them both. Let's move them out here over some darker background. We can really see what's going on. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll select the actual part of this. I'll nudge it out a little bit, just like that, just using that right arrow key. I've got the Move tool selected. That looks pretty good. All right, we're going to select both these layers now, Layer 2 and 3. Hit Command or Control E to merge them together. It's going to get rid of the Screen Blend Mode. That's fine. Now we can just take the layer and reset it to Screen Blend Mode, and there we are. We're back to where we were. Now, I want the word Natural to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to straight up resize it. But before I do any resizing with these words, I'm going to right-click on the layer, convert it to a Smart Object. In fact, I'm going to name this layer Natural. And I'll just name this layer the, just because I'm just picky about that kind of stuff. So Command or Control T and hold down Shift and Alt. There'll be Shift and Option on the Mac. And we're going to make this a bit bigger. So something kind of, I think, maybe like, like that. That looks pretty cool. And then what I'll do with the word the, I want this to be a bit smaller. And once more, before we do any resizing, right-click on the layer, Convert to Smart Object. Let's drag it over to like here. And we're going to just scale this down, uh, something like that. Maybe we'll put it up here. So kind of like his punch is coming and landing right there, almost on that part of the N, and the word the is resting just a little above it. Maybe I'll move it to the point where it's going to ride with the edge of the glove just kind of perfectly, and then we can always mask it in a little bit. Eh, something I think kind of like that will look cool. 
what I want to do next is add the layer masks for both of these layers. And I'm just going to go in and tuck parts of the, the lettering behind areas of the photo. And you can do this as you see fit. I'm going to speed this part of the video up here as you just watch me fly through with this mask and, uh, you know, just integrate the text a little bit better here within our image. So there we go. That looks pretty cool, but there's still something we can do to make it look even cooler. Let's go ahead and create a new layer above everything else. And we're going to call this layer shadows. And we're going to hand paint in a few little shadows here where our text tucks sort of behind bits of, you know, the gloves and the body and everything. So I'm going to set my foreground color to black. If you if you don't have black as either of your four or background color, hit the letter D. It will uh, reset your foreground and background color. Use the square bracket keys to make the text or the, the brush, not the text, the brush tool a little bit larger. And I'm just going with a very very soft edge, about 40 pixel brush, and again, I'm painting with the color black. So what I'm going to do here is I'll probably reduce the opacity of the brush as well, something like, you know, 18 to 20 percent, something right now, oh, 14, that's good enough. And then what I'll do is I'll begin just painting in here by the base of these letters, right? And then I'll come over here where this letter tucks, you know, where the glove is sort of making impact with it, here where the letter is kind of tucking underneath the glove, also over here, and I know it looks bad, but we're going to mask it all in to get the stuff off of the glove and here, like the side of his head. Oops, we're shadowing that a little bit too much. Let's go with something more like that. That's cool. Uh, where else do we have this? We have it tucking behind his arm here. So go ahead, add a little shadow there. Uh, up here underneath his arm, add a little shadow there. And maybe even along the top of the text, just in general right there. Maybe even out to there. That's kind of cool. And then like just a little bit of shadow right in there. Something like that. So now to make the selection around this text, we, we need to make kind of a rough selection. And we're going to do that by selecting the national layer. And we'll go select... We'll choose color range, and we'll just uh, highlight the national area, kind of like this. You see, it's given us kind of a rough selection, but it's it's in there. In fact, if you want to get even a more precise selection, just shut off the background. And now let's go uh, select color range, and we'll go ahead and choose natural. And you can see, just use the fuzziness here and make it more or less uh, the selection that you need. And as long as it's pretty close, that'll be close enough. You can turn the background layer back on and select the shadows layer, and then we'll just go layer, layer mask, Reveal selection. So it's going to use that selection and then just constrain our shadows now just to within that selection. So you can see now we just have our shadows on the text. You can reduce the opacity or whatever you need to do to that layer directly now and just really take control of those shadows. So you get some nice custom shadows just adding some additional shape to our overall effect here. So now we want to sort of set the text off of the background a little bit more. So we're going to go down to our background layer. We're going to add a selective color adjustment layer. And what I'll do first is go to the neutrals right here and I'm going to up the blacks about 20 percent so you can see it's going to kind of make it look crazy that's fine then we're going to go down to the blacks and we're going to reduce the black point within the blacks to about negative 10 so you can see it's really doing this kind of like topsy-turvy contrasty mess this is not at all the finished effect here because next we're going to add a curves adjustment layer we're just working in the RGB composite channel and I'm basically going to look to darken the darks so I'm going to bring this down to about here maybe I'll boost the black point I'll bring it up to about right there something like that looks cool and then we'll bring the whites back up just a little bit maybe we'll bring it to right about there so something like that you can see there's before there's after and now let's go ahead and grab a gradient map adjustment layer right here and I'm going to click on the gradient stripe. We're going to build a custom gradient here. So we're going to select the color stop on the left. And I'm going to go with the color uh, 0E0910. 0 0 it's a very, very dark blue. Wow, look at that. That already looks super cool. We're going to hit OK. And I'm, going to, I'm not finished yet. We're going to select the white point here. We're going to try a different color. We're going to go 4B7793. Uh, so very light blue. In fact, I might like the white a little bit. I'm going to brighten that up, bring it closer to the white. Something more like a steely gray. I'm going to hit OK. I think I like that more than what I even had uh, there in mind initially. Now what we want to do is we need to be able to colorize this text. So let's select both the natural and the the layer and right click and convert these bad boys to a smart object. You can see, uh oh, all the black came back. That's fine. That's because our blend mode got reset to normal. We've been through this before. Let's just reset this to screen. There we are, sitting pretty. And we're going to create a really special gradient map for this. So we're going to go back to the gradient map adjustment layer. We're going to open this up. We're going to add a third point right around the middle, location 48%, whatever, who's counting. Let's select the gradient color stop all the way to the left and set this to solid black. Just like that. Hit OK. Look at that. Wow, that looks pretty cool. Let's go to the middle point here, and we're going to set this to a very bright red. So just FF0000. You can see super red. Ooh, that's looking pretty cool too. And then we're going to go to the very bright, uh, the brightest of brights here, and we're going to go FFFC00. So this is like a pretty bright yellowish orange color. Hit OK. And we kind of have this fire gradient, and hit OK. Now, 
that actually looks pretty cool in and of itself. But I think if we clip this gradient map layer just to the text, we'll have a really, really neat effect. So I'm going to use the hotkey command option or control alt and the letter G, and it will clip that gradient map to just the text. And you can see the effect that we're getting. So, so cool. And at this point, you can go in and we can see here, for instance, we missed some stuff here with our layer mask. So we can select that layer. We can add a new layer mask to the smart object, grab our brush tool, and just paint away. Just do any kind of final cleaning up that we may need to do. Make sure you set the opacity of the brush back up to 100. And then go ahead and paint that stuff away and clean up, you know, clean up generally whatever needs to be cleaned up. The edges of our type have this really cool, like, glowing, fiery redness to them. And the insides have this really bright, like, sulfuric yellow, which is really, really cool. I think the shadows here, maybe let's set these to something like uh, multiply. And it's not going to change them too, too much. Just reduce the opacity a little bit more. I think they just need, they need to be a little bit more subtle. There we go. Something, I think, kind of like that. So we began with an image like this. We went ahead, added our own custom handwritten text to it that, of course, we drew ourselves on paper. And hopefully you downloaded along with me. Uh, and we've gone ahead and created this really cool effect in Photoshop. Again, using your own custom hand lettering. Uh, it's very easy to import and go ahead and create sort of a composite text effect like this, uh, which is great to share or put out there in the world, whatever. Uh, but one thing I would like to tell you guys, if you do create this effect, make sure you upload it to Instagram. Tag me in it. My Instagram handle is at Tutvid. I would love to see what you guys come up with from this tutorial, even if it's not doing exactly what I do. Take the markers. Go get yourself some markers or some markers you have in your house. Write something yourself and work it into a, uh, an image that you have. I would absolutely love to see what you come up with. I think it's a really cool effect. Um, so that's going to be it for this one for using brushes to do some hand lettering and gradient maps and black and white stuff and masking and a little bit more masking and lots of cool color effects here in Photoshop for this cool custom hand lettering effect. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.